Hey guys, c 2 here. So I've recently just finished a move, and if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll see that I have a dedicated studio slash office space. So I thought that now that it's all set up, I might as well give you a quick tour of it all. So first things first, let's look at my guitars. So here we are my guitar rack. These are all the electric guitars I own. To start off, we'll be looking at some of the guitars I used on my older releases. So first off, let's take a look at my Fender Stratocaster. The full model name for this guitar is a Fender American Deluxe Stratocaster. I got this guitar back in 2006, which makes it 12 years old. I used it for all the six string material on my old albums up until Senpai EP. So if you've noticed the characteristic Stratocaster twang to some of the guitar tones, it's because it was recorded on a Strat. This guitar is very dear to my heart. It holds a lot of sentimental value for me. I still play it very often, so it's one that I'll hopefully keep a hold of forever. Moving on, here we have my Ibanez RG1527. I got this guitar back in 2007 and it was my first foray into extended range instruments. I also really wanted an Ibanez back then because so many of my favorite guitarists like Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Paul Gober, and John Petrucci before he switched to Music Man played Ibanez. I also wanted to hop aboard the extended range train since I was a big fan of Dream Theater back then. So all the seven string material on my old albums up until Senpai P was recorded with this guitar. So I don't really play this guitar a lot anymore, but again, it's one with a lot of sentimental value, so I'll hope to hang on to it forever. Next we'll be looking at my mayonnaise guitars. These are the guitars that I use day to day and the guitars that I use when I tour. So this is my mayonnaise Regis 6. This is the first custom guitar I received from mayonnaise. This is probably the nicest feeling guitar I've ever played in my life. Just everything about it makes it just feel incredible to play. It sounds incredible. I just love this guitar. So to go more specifically into the specifications of the guitar, it has a blue quilted maple top. It has an ebony fret board with my custom inlay. It has a mahogany body with an 11 piece neck and as you can see it has a neck through design. For the bridge it has a hip shot fixed bridge. For pickups it has a Demarzio punch lab and a Demarzio liquefier. It has a through a pickup selector, volume and tone knobs and if you pull the volume knob you get a split coil selector. So this guitar was the main guitar used on Senpai AP2 and it'll be the six string I use in the new album for any material that doesn't require a trend bar. Let's put that away and try not to drop it. Next we're going to look at the main seven string that I use. This is a mayonnaise Duval 7 with an elite designation, I believe. So spec-wise, this has a natural flame maple top, has an ebony fretboard, mahogany body, five-piece neck, bolt-on construction, has a hip shot fixed bridge, has a Seymour Duncan Nazgul and Sentient, three pickup selector and one volume knob like all Duvels and pull on the volume knob to get a split coil sound. This will be the guitar I use for any seven string material on the new album. Let's put that away. Finally, we have my Mayonnaise CTS 6 Pro. Pro because any Mayonnaise guitar with a Floyd Rose style bridge is given the Pro designation. So you might ask why the Floyd Rose? They're a big hassle to maintain and change strings with. But honestly, I just missed it. I really missed having a trem system on my guitar. So I just wanted one of my Mayos to have it. So spec wise, we have a purple flame maple top inspired by Prog Chan's guitar from Senpai EP 1 and 2. Yes, I have a guitar where the finish was inspired by anime. It has a ebony fretboard with my custom inlay. It has a mahogany body with a five piece neck bolt-on construction. For pickups it has a Seymour Duncan Pegasus and Sentient. The bridge is a Schaller Floyd Rose style bridge. Through a pickup selector, volume and tone knob, and like with my other Mayos, pull on the volume knob to get a split coil sound. So for the new album I really wanted to incorporate a lot of the trem bar stuff, so this is probably the main six that you'll hear in the new album. Alright, try not to drop this one as well. So that's it for my electric guitars, let's move on to the X effects. So before I talk about the aspects, I forgot to say that I have a Taylor, I think it's a 114CE. Anyway, this guitar sounds incredible, so any acoustic guitar you hear in the new album will be this. So yeah, as many of you know, I use the Axe FX. It's looking kind of lonely in its rack on its own. I don't have anything else to put in this rack unit. It's just been my mainstay for all my guitar recording as well as touring. Touring with an Axe FX is so incredibly easy since you just put it in a bag and carry it on a plane with you, and that's it. For live shows, I've been using automated patch changes, uh, so that means I literally don't have to do anything except play the guitar and occasionally talk to people, but I try to avoid that. So yeah, not much else to say about the Axe FX other than it's here. You can actually still download the old Axe FX tones I used on Axe Exchange. I've actually changed up some of my patches for the new album, so after I release that, I'll upload those tones as well. So here is an assortment of cables and doodads. Not really much that I want to show you other than it's just important to keep your stuff organized. At my old flat, I don't know, I think I found about five, six, seven various audio cables at the bottom of one of my drawers. So yeah, just uh, as a bit of general advice, it's good to keep your stuff organized so you know where everything is if you need to find it. Hey, wait a second, what the hell is this thing? 
So looking at my desk here, not a lot has changed in my setup apart from the fact that I've started to use Studio One 3 as my main DAW, moving up in the DAW world there. Still using a two display setup, still using Yamaha HS8 studio monitors, still using a Focusrite 18i8, sorry, Focusrite Scarlet 18i8 interface. Added a Roland MIDI keyboard, MIDI controller to my setup. I can barely play it, but it's there anyway. Uh, still rocking the same PC, same specs, so not a lot has changed there, uh, but as a point of interest we can take a look at what's in my drawers. So in here we have lots and lots of picks, lots of Jim Dunlop picks, I have a big bag of the new 1mm flow picks, those are incredible, you should try them out. And some Dodaro NYXLs. Again, incredible strings. If you've not tried them, you should try them out. And over here we have just random shit. Nothing important in there. Oh, but yeah, that's my desk. This is where I record all my stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And to motivate me, I have an assortment of anime posters. Who needs acoustic treatment when you're motivated by anime posters? So that's it for looking around my studio space. I'm actually going to finish the video by answering some of the more commonly asked questions I get about songwriting, as well as including some general songwriting tips that have helped me in there as well. So the first question is, how do you deal with doubting what you're writing? So the first thing to understand about doubting what you're writing is that it's completely natural and it happens to anybody who is involved in a creative practice. So that includes songwriting, drawing, writing a novel or a piece of prose. Doubt is just something that's common to everybody who's in a creative field. So my advice for those of you feeling a lot of doubt in what you're writing is to understand that it's natural. What you need to do is transform that doubt into something more constructive like self-critique. That way it's something that can help your writing process without going too easy on yourself, but without becoming so overbearing that it becomes an obstacle to actually getting anything written. So the next question is, how do you decide whether you want to keep an idea or not? So I'm going to use answering this question to give a more general piece of advice when it comes to songwriting. Songwriting, like anything else in music, is something that requires practice. Nobody is just good at songwriting from the get-go. Anybody whose music that you admire has probably spent hours upon hours upon hours writing music, stuff that will never see the light of day but forms the basis for their songwriting practice. So if it's something that you need to practice, my advice would be to finish every single song that you start. Even if you don't like the song or feel that it's not something you can use that will contribute towards the release, the act of writing the song itself will serve as experience and practice for the next time you write music. So to answer the question of whether to keep an idea or not, I would say keep them all. It's all something that contributes to your songwriting practice. So a question I also get asked a lot is what is my songwriting process? So you saw my desk and my DAW. So what I'll generally do is just sit at my desk with a guitar, with my XFX on, with my DAW on, just ready to write and track whenever I get an idea. So how a song starts varies. It could be from a chord progression, from a riff, from a melody. Regardless of how the song starts, I use that as a basis, a springboard to move into the writing process. So from there, I'll start recording all the elements of the song and then I'll start programming basic drums to track along with. Because of the way I write and record together in the same sitting, what generally happens to my music is it tends to be very linear in structure. Albums like Set Chorus from Drum are full of songs that don't follow prescribed verse chorus structure. They generally move from one section into the next, into another section, into another section all of which are unique to each other. That's just something I find writing the way that I do. It's also something I enjoy not having a traditional song structure but writing with that kind of song structure is facilitated by the way I record. Finally a question I see a lot is how do I make my music sound anime? So in essence anime music is Japanese pop music so as with learning any different genre of music what you want to do is a listen to that music and b understand what makes that music unique as well as the idiosyncrasies behind it. So the three things that are distinct in Japanese and anime music are certain harmonic quirks, prominent use of melodies, and certain types of instrumentation. So an example of this harmonic quirk would be in a minor progression, finishing on chord one, but making it major instead of minor. Very often it's accompanied by playing a sus4 chord, then playing the major chord. If you listen to any Japanese pop music, especially those songs that are featured in anime, you'll hear this quirk a lot. 
Another thing that's very distinct in Japanese anime music is the use of a strong melody. Almost every anime opening you'll hear will have a very strong melodic hook, and it'll either be a vocal line or a synth line or a guitar line. But the common thread here is that the melody is very present and very catchy. It should be the kind of thing that sticks in your head even if you don't want it to. The final distinct element of Japanese or anime music is the use of instrumentation. Piano is almost omnipresent in all anime music. Piano is very often used to layer chords and harmony to create a different texture, and it's also used to play along to the melody as well. You'll also very often hear strings. This is again either to layer the harmony or to play along with the melody or create a counter melody. Another common instrumentation element is the use of synths. So hopefully that explains some of what contributes to that Japanese pop or anime style of music. So that's it for the questions and advice. I didn't want to go too in depth. I'm hopefully saving some of the more in depth discussion for later videos. So that's it for today. Before I go, I just want to mention that I have a Patreon now, the link to which can be found below in the description. Patrons are able to access anything from being given access to all the music I've ever recorded, plus all future music I will be releasing, to getting sneak peeks of future material, and up to being able to request stems and project files and artwork files of anything I've released in the past. So if becoming a patron interests you, like I said, the link is in the description. Thanks to all my existing patrons for all your support, as well as being incredibly patient with me as I get everything rolling in terms of content. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.